Today we're going to make a shelf with added organization in which the drawers are made out of in and out trays. Yeah, you heard me right. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. I started with a sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood because I make 87% of all my projects out of 3 quarter inch plywood. The struggle is always real for the small person versus large work table, but I managed, as you do. I clamped the plywood to the work table and then used my track saw to cut off a 12 inch strip from the end. I then unclamped, reset, reclamped, and cut a second 12 inch strip. Finally, I cut a third strip, this one at 10 inches. And this is what it looks like from this angle. That was it for the big piece of plywood, so I moved it out of the way, very awkwardly. Essentially what I'm starting out by making are two boxes. Right now I'm cutting the sides of the boxes, which will be 12 by 12. I got lucky with the measurements since a sheet of 3 quarter inch plywood is 48 inches wide. Well, 48 and a bit. I love cutting plywood with a track saw because not only is it a lot easier to get those straight lines, it's also a really good leg workout, you know, if you do it right. I wanted the runners for my drawers to be as even as possible, so I lined up the two sides and made all the marks at the same time so that the measurements would all be equal. Then I taped the two pieces together so they wouldn't wiggle. There's no wiggling in woodworking. I made each initial cut, flipped the board over, and then did a second pass to widen the groove. I didn't do a very good job. I did a much better job the second time around on the other set of sides, which is not easy to say when you have a lisp. It's gonna take me a little while to do this sanding, so this feels like a good opportunity to talk to you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people just like you. You can explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get absolutely completely lost in creativity. I took a class called Stitching Woodland Creatures 101 with Fleur, and I'm not even going to attempt to say her last name because I don't want to embarrass either of us. I love embroidery, but have only ever done cross stitch, which is to embroidery as paint by numbers is to, well, painting. It is exceedingly rare to come across such a wonderfully in-depth and well-framed tutorial, and I have to admit, the squirrel is what really did it for me. I could not pass up the opportunity to learn how to create Gary's European cousin. So handsome. If you're uncertain about what's next, you can try out some creative challenges and productivity classes that will show you great ways to structure your time and set up goals that are actually achievable. If you're looking for a similarly creative community that will inspire you to do the thing you've never done before, or focus on your own self-care through creativity, a very important thing, then Skillshare is the place to keep you learning. 
the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And after that, it's only like $10 a month. It's totally worth it. And thank you again to Skillshare for continuing to sponsor me. As much as I love the look of raw plywood and exposed edges, I decided that this shelf needed to be black because the boxes I was using are red and red and black are the perfect combination. I used plain black ink and applied it with a foam brush with a smaller bristled brush for the crevices. One of the things I love about using ink is that it dries almost immediately. So by the time I had finished inking the last piece, the first piece was ready for a clear coat. I love the look of just the ink on the plywood, but unfortunately it will come off on your hands or whatever else touches it. So I locked that ink in with a single coat of a spray clear coat. I then applied a final coat with a foam brush. In retrospect, I could have just spray coated everything and done two coats with it, but this is the way I did it last time I did a project like this, and I didn't really think about using the spray can the whole time. I think last time I didn't have enough. Also this time I didn't have enough. Either way, works. The assembly is pretty basic. None of this is meant to really carry a heavy load or deal with a lot of side-to-side -side action, so it was just a matter of screwing the pieces together. Whenever I have to screw two pieces together, I try to inset the screws just a little bit so I don't require a third hand. Normally, I would pre-drill the holes, but I didn't this time, and it was a bad idea. So guess what? I went and got a drill and did it properly. I put down a very thin line of clear glue before screwing the two pieces together. I did the same for the other side. Pre-drill, glue, attach. There is such a low probability that this box will actually come out with right angles, but again, it's not the most important thing, and you can always add more structure to the back to keep it square. To attach the top, I lined up one corner and pre-drilled all the way into the supporting structure below. I then moved to the other side and did the same. This way, when I go to attach it, if the screws are sticking out just beyond the plywood, they have something to sit into. And at this point, I realized that I had put that top runner too high. There was not enough room for the screw to go in all the way, which is a bummer, but we move on. And in the end, it worked out fine anyways. The drawers stick a little bit, but with a little bit of case wax, it'll be fine. That right there is actually a complete project, but I decided to take it one step further and put a shelf that spans the distance between the two boxes. I did this by turning the box on its side, measuring where I wanted the shelf to be, and then adding a support piece of plywood under that. And I added an even smaller support piece of plywood to that. This little piece is important because when I drill through the top of the shelf to attach it to the supports, I'm going to be drilling straight into that little tiny piece. And I did the same thing on the other side. It would have been nice if this whole clip was in focus, but it's not, so whatever. You get the idea. You place the shelf on the supports and screw it in place. I wouldn't recommend exactly this style for something that needs to carry a lot of weight, a whole bunch of heavy books or tons of things in drawers. 
This was basically a prototype. It's an idea of what I want my desktop to look like. So I thought, why not just give it a shot and see what happens? And this is what happened. This whole project idea came about because my friend sent me a bunch of trays from In-N-Out and said, hey, what do you think you could do with these? If you're not familiar with In-N-Out, it is a hamburger chain that is fantastic. Just ask Brad. I can never figure out problems until I'm in the midst of something and I think, oh, I should have done it a different way. That's why I build things, and hopefully that's what you're learning from watching this. I'm not here to teach you how to do it. I'm showing you how many mistakes I made and how you can make it better now that you know the mistakes are possible. Probable even. Highly likely. If you want to be more regularly updated on what I'm all about, or up to, or whatnots, you can follow me on Instagram. Give me a thumbs up if you love squirrels, and give me a thumbs down if I hate you. Let me know what you think in the comment section. All comments are welcome. If you're stinky though, you'll be ignored. Or I'll poke you. And don't forget to subscribe, because how else would you know the two and a half times per year that I post a video?